fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to Synchronicity Web TV. I am your host, Nadia Shaw, and this is your moment of synchronicity. Well, look, if you are a regular Synchronicity Web TV viewer, you know and you love the great Michael Barwick. Michael Barwick is a dear friend of mine. He is someone that I consider my astrologer. He's just that good. And so he's the very first person I'm interviewing as part of letting you know some of the absolutely brilliant astrologers that we are going to have at this upcoming conference. Synchronicity University and the London School of Astrology have joined forces for the Equinox event celebrating the community of astrology and all the different perspectives that are out there. The great Michael Barwick that you see right here, well, he is going to be bringing a traditional perspective and I'm so excited that he's here. Thank you, Michael. I love you. Thank you for being here. Uh, always a great pleasure to be with you, Nadia, on uh, Synchronicity Web TV. Well, you know, I just adore you. I think, and I have said this again and again, you're just one of the best astrologers out there. And I know I'm a better astrologer as a result of all the conversations we've had over the years that we've known each other for many years now, some 13 years, I think I've known you. And so, yes, you're going to be teaching with this huge event, this huge online conference event that is going to be taking place at the Autumn Equinox mm -hmm. 2021. So what is your talk going to be about? Well, I, I'm going to explore this concept uh, that you find in Hellenistic thinking of the entity known uh, called the diamond or, or daemon. Um, this term has, of course, been in, uh, utilized in uh, technology as a, referring to a program that does something, uh, a daemon. Um, but before it be was technolo technologized, it used to be, uh, you know, the, the Christian formation of it was very much a dualistic one. And sometimes in old cartoons, you'll see characters talking to the good angel on one shoulder and the bad angel on the other, you know, who's each competing for, uh, you know, the, the moral choice and the moral decision of the person. The diamond, in the, from a, a Greek perspective, the way they saw it was some kind of guiding spirit or mediating force that, that, that helped and aided um, each individual and was aligned with their genius or with their spirit, you know, with, with some of the strongest talents or attributes of the individual. So, so my talk is going to look at this astrologically in terms of uh, ways of understanding the daemon in the horoscope, uh, both from a traditional perspective. Um, there are a number of factors to look at and we'll examine those. And then also we'll talk about, you know, some of the modern thinking about it as well. Um, tying in together some of Jung's ideas about this concept. But I think it's an interesting one because, you know, it's, it's um, people feel they want something that is sort of closer to them than sort of the all ultimate, you, you know, universe in all of its totality. It's like they want, they want something local, right? With something closer to them. And I think sort of identifying or having a sense of the quality of the spirit that is attempting to guide them, attempting to manifest uh, more of who they are uh, in this world um, is helpful. It can be a helpful lens uh, when looking at the horoscope. And you know that my great uh, and dear professor, Jeffrey Cornelius in the moment of astrology has written about the daemon quite a bit and researched the daemon quite a bit. And I know that um, early Christian philosopher, St. Augustine wrote about the daemon quite a bit as well. Now, interestingly, I'll tell you one thing that I remember of a few things I remember from uh, the stuff that I read from St. Augustine was that he believed that in order to do an astrology reading, you had to like rely on this idea of spirits or daemons or um, being enthused. But his argument against astrology was that you could be a really good person, but you don't know if you're connecting with a, a good daemon or a bad daemon. And you don't know if you're being led astray when you open yourself up to spirits especially and during a divinatory reading like an astrology reading. So what do you think well, of that? Well, I, I think that that um, to sort of 
speculate that astrology is the promptings of some otherworldly entity. Isn't that is interesting? To sort of, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it you know, it, that it's channeled material in some way. Um, you know, the promptings of something, I think, is sort of not really what astrology is. Like, we've talked about this in terms of, of uh, what is astrology. And, and astrology fundamentally is a language. It's a very intellectual process, mercurial, this is my argument, as we know, this long running uh, uh, I mean, argument we have I'm about sure, the nature yeah. of astrology. Yeah. Um, and, and because of that quality of it, it's one of interpreting symbols. And I'm always amazed at how powerful, you know, one has, one brings to the session an agenda of things that, you know, the person that you're talking to really should have some insight into, some perspective on, and you speak to those symbols as you understand them from, you know, your experience with them, from, from, uh, from what you've read, what you, what you know from, you know, the laboratory of your own chart and what you've seen, and also you know, through uh, through the imagination of the astrologer, certainly there is a creative dimension to it. But uh, to think that it's some, you know, evil spirit, uh, you know, is really not what is like, like that's not the kind of astrology that how I understand it. I understand it very much in terms of this language, this interpretation and this communication of these this higher reality that we we see in reflection to what's already at work here and now on planet Earth. Um, it's very powerful to consider like the role of the daemon in astrology though, isn't it? Um, well, I, I, think, I think it's very important to consider the daemon in, 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 in terms of life, in terms of like when we look at the charts of individuals that are you know, profoundly talented individuals, uh, you know, in terms of in terms of what you know pushed them into their art and and drove them to achieve in that particular area of life um we can see examples uh, we can see sort of dimly what through astrology's lens what it is the force that is you know the quality of what is guiding them what is prompting them what is urging them forward the flavor of it that's what astrology gives us it gives us you know the the, the essence of it in a in a, a a qualitative way not a quantitative way it it gives us a sense of 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 what it appears like what it what it works like, but not necessarily the specific manifestation of what form it takes, and, and certainly not necessarily how open an individual is to the promptings of, you know, what I would consider the daemon to be one's higher self, one's, one, the self that is calling oneself into fuller, more authentic, uh, freer uh, expression of self. Uh, that's what I think astrology has to offer. And I, as I tell my clients is that, that my, my job here is not to, to restrict and bind with fate, but rather to empower and free and give people more choices in terms of how to uh, creatively work with, you know, what is either in their natal horoscope or what circumstances are bringing them through transits or progressions or solar arc or whatever your particular favorite predictive technique. And I think that's part of what can make an astrology reading that much more rewarding for us as the reader, certainly, but also for the client as well, that sense of facilitating awareness of your choices. It's a very powerful thing, a, a gift even, I would say, that not only do we uh, get to facilitate in other people, but we get to be reminded of this for ourselves as well when we're in that moment of a reading. Also, I think astrology provides, um, you know, this profound way of affirming what is true for a person. Quite often I get uh, in uh, as uh, responses to, uh, from clients, um, I call them love letters. I get these notes from them, you know, thank you very much for the reading and so forth. Um, what it was like for them, but I, I often get the feedback that you know that they feel affirmed that that I may not have told them something new that they didn't know, but I may have I may have um, affirmed or 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 given them the sense of the truth 
of something that they felt to be true and astrology gave them sort of a way of understanding it more fully and affirming it in them. And that in itself is so profoundly healing because there are so many images out there of who we are and who we ought to be and what we should be striving for as reflected through the media, through our commercials and so forth. That astrology, I think, properly used provides this window into the authentic person in terms of who they are and who, most importantly, they were meant to be. Wow. Astrology, when properly used, provides a window into whom a person is most authentically meant to be. That's so powerful. Yeah. yeah. That's so powerful. That's like a quote. That should be a meme with your picture on it. It is just so perfect. I love it. <laughs> And this is part of what I love about you is that you are so philosophical and insightful. Okay, so what else do people need to know about this talk before I move on and get to ask you questions that I like to ask you about about yourself? Well, you know, it's going to be fun. I don't know how many charts I'm going to be able to to jam into, you know, the very limited amount of time that I have. But but it's going to be fun. It's going to be light. Um, it, people will emerge with a takeaway in terms of here's some th criteria to look at in terms of my chart around this idea of the daemon. Um, and, uh, you know, so it'll be it won't be just philosophical. It'll be there'll be some applied applied learning to be able to take back to your own horoscope and, and get some insight into your own daemon, you know, finding it in your horoscope. Well, I'm so excited to look at the daemon in my own horoscope from your lesson as well. So I'm really, really excited about that. So Michael, as you were talking, I just realized for all the times that I have interviewed you for Synchronicity Web TV, all the times I've put you on my social media, because God knows you've been in a lot of Instagram and Facebook stories with me. Um, I don't think I've ever asked you on camera, how did you get into astrology? Because I know you have this very interesting story as to how you found yourself on the path of becoming an astrologer. Well, I, I mean, I started um, very young yes. um, in the sense that, you know, I wasn't quite born with my birth chart in my hands, but, but when I was seven, my parents moved from uh, a very urban uh, area into a much more rural one. And it was the era of the early 70s when, uh, you know, things like astrology were in, like astrology is in now, and there's a, this whole sort of resurgence. But there was, a, there was certainly an explosion of interest in astrology, in the I Ching, in the runes, um, my father and my uncle discovered Jung, so they were talking about archetypes and the collective unconscious. And, you know, and for a young Gemini such as myself, it was just too, too fascinating. Who wants to talk to my peers when, when there's all this interesting material out there? Uh, certainly, I was a reading age, and I went through my parents' library of material. And, you know, naturally, I, you know, got into reading, you know, my mother's uh, new consciousness material, everything from Abraham Maslow to, to Jung to, to, you know, Ian Gray about the tarot, uh, as an author, maybe you know, um, to uh, uh, Blum's book on the Book of Runes. Like, there was, I was just sort of exposed to this. I mean, I was, you know, I mean, when I think about it now, it's like, I was like, uh, it was like a little occult child growing up in a way because I'd be homesick and I'd be playing solitaire with tarot, with my mother's tarot cards, right? Really Incredible. terrible thing to do. So beautiful, yeah. Um, so the, you know, with, with the major arcana becoming the fifth suit. So anyway, I was exposed to all of this and, and, and read about all of this material, absorbed it, but it was astrology that most uh, offered uh, a sense of, of why are people similar and why are people different. And, and I had a very rudimentary astrological book that had a table for, you know, sign placements uh, for planets. And uh, I started talking to my schoolmates and getting their birth data and looking at charts. Um, and and uh, my, 
How old were you? At well, by this time I was like about 11 or 12 when I was, I, I was, you know, you know, uh, just sort of pre-teenager. And it was about this time that my parents, you know, would started throwing these parties. They'd throw parties during, you know, like I can remember one party was held during a, a lunar eclipse that was happening that night. So it was a full moon lunar eclipse that was visible from where we were. And we're going, I don't see an eclipse. I don't see it. Eventually there was an eclipse. But anyway, I don't know if it was this particular session, but, but this particular party, but my parents wheeled me out to interpret the horoscopes of adults at the, at the party. So here, 11 year old, was talking to adults about somebody's chart. And really, my knowledge was pretty crude about astrology. But but I think it was an experience that was very validating because I said things and people would laugh or gasp or, you know, or say, oh, that's really true or whatever um, with the lens that I had at that time. Because I think it's really important in in, you know, where we get kind of caught up with technique and ways of looking at astrology and different perspectives that astrology is a lens. So whatever you have, you know, you can, you can touch truth with it. It's like, if you only understand one astrological symbol and you follow it through to its core, you can say something very profound about a person if you have just that little bit of knowledge. So in a similar way, even though I had this very crude understanding of how astrology worked and it was only natal, it wasn't like I had transits and all the, you know, all the wonderful things that, you know, came later. Um, I was able to, you know, to entertain at the very least and, and have fun. So astrology was an interest that stayed with me through my teens. I was always interested in, in it, but it was really in my 20s when the bug really bit me. And uh, I can remember reading a book you know, when I got sort of exposed to sort of more uh, sophisticated materials. And I can remember reading uh, a, a reading horoscope symbols by Robert Hand, that may be a book that you're familiar with, um, and him talking about, you know, the moon, uh, interpreting the moon in a person's horoscope could tell you something about their mother. And I was like, what? Like, that's like, what do you mean you could do that with a, I can't, I don't believe you can do this with a chart. So of course I began studying more intensely, looking at charts, uh, talking to people, the more charts you look at, the more people you want to talk to, the more people find out that you're doing chart readings for free, the more they want to have their chart read. And so it went on like this for a while. And then finally, somebody paid me. <laughs> And that was when the light bulb went off in my head that, you know, I'm good enough to do this professionally. I'm good enough to be someone who can re give real value to someone using this art, which is how I see astrology very much in this artistic sense of, of the poetry of a person as expressed, you know, from the cosmos, uh, from the, our unique perspective here on earth. Uh, and it was from there that I, I, uh, you know, I, the I started Warwick that you are today. And I, well, love, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I love this idea of you being this little kid at a party, like the star of the show, really the star of the show, looking at people's charts. I just love that image so much. Well, it was, it's, I'm sure it was, I'm sure it was, I'm sure it was very cute, but I, I mean, it was like, like when I think about it now, I, I am sort of amazed that I actually, I actually did that, but but uh, it did sort of, you know, I did realize the power of it that you could, you could, you could, uh, you could, you could say things that were, you know, both entertaining and truthful and powerful. Yes, truthful, powerful, that speak to the truth of the experience of a person. It's a very powerful thing. I mean, I understand why up until very recently in human history, um, the astrologers were the intermediaries of the gods. It is a very recent phenomenon that astrology and priesthood have been separated as they have been, or priestesshood have been separated. Um, well, I think, I think it's, I think it's, we do, we provide what is, whether or not we're called priests or not, it's still a priestly function in the sense that, that, that it is, it is a form of advice. It is a form of, that is part of it. It is a form of, 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 
being the consultant in terms of of having a knowledge of something that your client doesn't understand and what what giving them giving them that knowledge and them to do with it what they will to accept it reject it do different things whatever but it but as i often point out to people who are skeptical about astrology that even if astrology has no validity whatsoever even if it's a hundred percent of fantasy in all of our minds well how that could be true i don't know yeah about many examples we've seen but even if that's true astrology is still valuable because it gives you a fresh perspective you can't get anywhere else mm. and that in itself can lead to creative thinking creative problem solving you know a new way of looking at and validating and working with one's circumstances so even on that level astrology has something to offer but of course as i've seen with my own chart over and over and as i'm sure you've seen with yours and with clients that astrology is powerful not only in terms of being able to describe what uh, who a person is in terms of their ultimate map of potential, but also very much in terms of where they're going and where they're evolving towards and how they're unfolding. And, and the correspondence, not causation, correspondence is not causation, mm -hmm. right? Even though it's convenient in language for us to speak about planets, planet A moving to position B, therefore event C happens, it's not causal. It's the correspondence, the reflection the is, reflection, uh, yes. which is, which is signaling to us something about the reality much closer to home than the heavens. That's the, the lesson is that, you know, astrology doesn't make anything happen. You know, it is, it's what's, what it shows. Yes, it's a mirror. And what it shows is already in progress. It's already happening around us. And that's, that's the, the, the thing about it. Um, and one thing I love is that astrology allows us to consider what our choices are, including the choice to access a higher vibration of a given aspect or transit or whatever may be taking place celestially uh, to the chart. Because it is Alan Leo, and you and I both are going to be speaking at the upcoming um, Canadian Astrology Conference. So I'm really Oh, yes, indeed we are. Yes, we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Uh, we can't meet in person this year, but that's okay. Next year, fingers crossed. But, uh, you know, us Canadians can really get down and you add the astrology factor in and it can just, you know, really go through the roof. Yeah. But I'm going to be speaking on Alan Leo for the Canadian Astrology Conference. And um, one thing that Alan Leo said, that I think is so fascinating among many things that are so fascinating about him is that he said, consciousness determines how the chart is experienced. That the level of consciousness a person brings to that chart is going to determine what is emphasized in that chart, what plays a more important part. And I was thinking of this in terms of people who do operate at a higher level of consciousness or at the very least have the desire to become more conscious than other people might, and how that can dramatically change how a particular aspect is experienced or realized. Consciousness is the only game worth playing because it enables you to make more choices, more creative choices. It frees you because it allows you to be who you are authentically, you're aware of yourself, and you're able to act accordingly. The less conscious you are, the more the forces of the universe uh, treat you like an automaton and you just get pulled hither and yon wherever, you know, it looks like it needs to go at the lowest common denominator. You want what your strengths are, what your challenges are, and what is the season of your life, what the time of your life looks like. And this kind of information, astrology provides one view, one window into. There are many ways of getting at this, but astrology is one very powerful tool, properly used, that um, can, uh, can engender healing and health and happiness, I believe. Um, I think it's fascinating. I read an article um, the other day that really spoke to uh, you know, a point that I've been talking about uh, the last little while with you, 
I wrote, I read this article about a professional astrologer who decided she's not going to be a professional astrologer anymore because she's concerned about, um, you know, planet panic, which is this sort of catastrophizing of, of astrological alignments. And I think some of this is, is sort of social media sensationalization that happens, right? I think people, you know, talk about, oh my God, it's eclipse season and oh my God, Mercury is retrograde and oh my God, you know, and so forth. That part of it is interest in sort of interpreting these omens that are occurring that, that we, we get, enter, we get, we get these interpretations from. Um, but I also think it's that, that we get afraid of astrology to the degree that we get afraid of life because really astrology can't put anything into a person's life that isn't in life right that isn't part and parcel of you know the 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 comings and goings the the of life and the flow of it and and understanding that and having the faith right the antidote to this mercurial sort of fret and worry, worry and fret, planet A, position B, event C, oh my God, the possibilities. Instead of thinking about all the negative things that could happen, instead be looking at all the positive things you could be doing to better and more consciously utilize the energy for, to hopefully help navigate you towards where it is you want to go. Uh, clients that have uh, experienced clients of mine know that when they come in to see me for follow-up sessions, for example, it's, you know, uh, very much, you know, where is, what's your agenda? Where is it that you want to go? We can talk about celestial navigation until the cows come home, but if you don't know where it is you're going, astrology isn't necessarily very helpful. I can tell you sort of, well, these are sort of the conditions that one will encounter, but what do you want to do with this, right? Yeah. What do you want to, you know, uh, accomplish with this? Um, and uh, you know, quite a, it's it's um, it's a challenge. Not always people like what the universe is delivering to them at any given time. It's it's um, or even what you know necessarily they have uh, in their horoscope. Uh, you know, it's it's um, there's always there's always stuff to get frightened about, and there's always stuff to panic about, and there's always stuff to complain about. But properly understood, astrology should leave you with a sense of of deep affirmation of the truth of who you are and and what you can do and where you can go and what you can accomplish towards the life that you dream of and and that's what i why i do it i wouldn't do it if it was only about telling people that on you know on the 10th of march you know the tall and dark stranger is going to come into your life it's just not not why i'm i study the craft so astrology can help move you towards a life that you dream of, or at least a version of yourself that is like the highest celebration and utilization of all that it is that you are, all that it is that you can be, which I think is such a wonderful, wonderful thing that astrology offers people and so much more of what astrology offers people as well. And I think everybody out there just saw why it is that Michael Barwick is uh, one of my very favorite people in the world and so, so very brilliant and somebody I love so, so very much. Michael, thank you. I'm really looking forward to your talk with the Autumn Equinox event, the London School of Astrology and Synchronicity University joining forces presenting this online event at the Autumn Equinox 2021 with some of the most brilliant and best superstar astrologers speaking alive today speaking and we're going to have a lot of fun together over the course of a weekend and michael barwick is going to be a part of that fun so thank you again michael my pleasure i love you and thank you everybody out there for watching and until we connect again take care bye bye, -bye. <laughs>